identifying which ones are successful and which ones may be easy to be abandoned because they're not particularly uh, uh, promising. And so, and this is a problem that applies uh, not just to like, community-driven activities, but first and foremost also to what the media foundation has been doing, like uh, rolling out new features and then determining, well, are we really moving the needle? Are we changing uh, the, the growth and the speed of uh, participation in our products? So this is a bit of caricature, but the way in which historically we've been looking at the success of some projects is basically uh, eyeballing the time series and look at the uh, deployment of a new feature, and then seeing a big peak in any relevant metric that we think is important for, for this project, and say, yeah, big success, uh, champagne, and uh, everybody's happy, uh, but without really knowing whether uh, that feature has been driving uh, the observed increase in that metric, and also without really telling us whether uh, we can quantify uh, reliably the effect of this feature, the effect of this initiative, the effect of this program in the metric that we're interested in. Um, so that's the, the first part of the problem that uh, uh, I think we, we want to, uh, to, to discuss and to tackle. The second part of the problem is that uh, uh, we come from a past where uh, we've used definitions uh, uh, of metrics, so how we measure activity, how we measure participation, that not only have been often uh, usually inconsistent, but even when we focus, for example, on a, on a definition of, say, an active editor, which is possibly one of the most uh, uh, common uh, metrics used for, for assessing the health of our projects or the health of specific initiatives, that same metric and that same definition has been applied in inconsistent ways as a function of uh, the project that uh, was applied to. So the question is, uh, uh, we don't really have a, a, a good approach, uh, we don't really have a, a, a formally defined ways of uh, measuring activity that we could use to improve our uh, understanding of what's working and what's not working. And this is where, uh, specifically in the context of the editor engagement program, we started looking at the notion of a cohort. Um, and we started thinking, well, instead of looking at project level changes that may not tell us much about what's happening uh, as a result of a new feature or as a, as a result of a new initiative, why don't we focus instead on a group of users sharing uh, some attributes? Uh, so a group of users sharing the same characteristic, where a characteristic might be, well, having participated in the same experiment, having participated in the same uh, initiative, uh, being part of a specific uh, sub-community of our editor base. And so shifting the focus from project level to court level uh, is the, the first uh, uh, answer that we, uh, we, we try to focus on. And the second part of the answer uh, was to try and, uh, and redefine what we consider as a metrics that we can use to, uh, to assess uh, and to measure the activity of new editors. So this is an example of work that uh, um, mostly uh, Aaron uh, focused on in the context of a, um, a review of uh, uh, activity participation metrics that we led uh, about a year ago. And this work resulted in a pretty detailed assessment of different ways of measuring the volume, the quality, the diversity uh, of uh, editor behavior and editor activity. And the purpose of this exercise was really to try and distill some, uh, some recipes about uh, quantitative indicators that we can use uh, to measure, again, the effects of specific initiatives. And so, what if we were to imagine a tool that allowed us to put these ideas into practice and actually support uh, our, routine, uh, our routine work of measuring uh, the effects of these uh, this initiatives. So imagine we could define a cohort uh, of users as a, an arbitrary list of editors uh, sharing a mutual attribute. So for example, this could be participants in an experimental condition, in an edit test that the foundation or uh, someone else is running, students enrolled in a global education course, uh, members of a specific wiki project, new editors reaching a specific threshold of activity in their first month since, since registration, Users register on mobile devices that we may have reason to think behave differently from uh, users registered on desktop devices. Participants in an editathon or in a uh, community driven initiative and so on. So imagine that once we define this uh, list of users as a uh, coherent cohort, uh, um, 
we focus on a, on a specific set of metrics, like a standardized set of metrics that we can use to uh, actually determine whether uh, these users were uh, particularly active or produced a high quality contribution or were retained over time. And this based on a formally defined uh, metric, so the meaning uh, is uh, informally defined and uh, transparent. And finally, imagine you could use a uh, the combination of a core definition and a standard metric to basically compare uh, the overall productivity, the overall quality, the overall retention of uh, editors uh, in this specific core to a meaningful baseline. And I don't want to get into uh, the question of what constitutes a meaningful baseline. Uh, we have some ideas about what, uh, what to call a baseline in the context of uh, experiments. There might be different baselines as much not that we want to measure, but um, I hope that the, the, the logic behind this approach uh, it becomes clear by, by now. So um, this process started uh, uh, last summer, as I said, with a lot of like, uh, background research on trying to understand uh, uh, the, the right set of metrics and how to formalize them. And we actually started feeling the need of uh, uh, developing a tool to routinely perform this analysis uh, and to support uh, the work of the, of the foundation in the context of uh, iterative initiatives. And what we came up with uh, after a couple of months of, uh, of uh, uh, development um, was this tool uh, called the User Metrics API. Uh, the tool has been used uh, pretty extensively uh, by several teams uh, internally in the organization. Um, and that basically allows you to do exactly what you described. So select an arbitrary list of users, run these users through uh, a standardized set of metrics that we believe are good indicators of uh, how they might perform uh, as a result of some uh, intervention uh, or, or uh, new features that these users have in common. And, and then basically retrieve data about their activity and uh, uh, use this data to measure the effectiveness of the uh, uh, this initiative. So this is a list of uh, the, the metrics that uh, we're implementing. I'd be happy to give you uh, more background about uh, uh, what these mean and uh, how we uh, define them and why we chose them. Um, but the, the basic idea is that uh, user metrics is a tool that uh, uh, initially uh, was designed for, for purely internal purposes. And we figured that this could turn into an API that uh, would allow us uh, to extend access to this functionality also to external parties, community members, uh, researchers might be interested in, uh, in analyzing and extracting these metrics for arbitrary defined list of users and editors. So again, uh, the first step was a, a formal definition of uh, what, we, uh, what we define as metrics, uh, backed by uh, long research and a, a crash tested uh, extensively uh, within the foundation uh, and the editor engagement program. Support cores uh, from uh, a variety of projects, so not just the English Wikipedia, but build a tool that is project agnostic and language agnostic, uh, so that uh, we could look at, uh, say, the same uh, for example, the same group of users or editors um, across different languages of, of uh, uh, Wikipedia, across different projects, etc. Um, and I was to perform a, a fast extraction of uh, metrics that may be computation intensive to extract, for example, uh, reverts or uh, operations that may require uh, basically uh, a heavy access on our uh, databases or our dumps. Um, and finally, you have the ability of returning not just individual responses, I'll give you in a moment an example of how, uh, how this works, but also aggregate data uh, at core level uh, and uh, time series data that allow us to monitor, for example, how a specific core uh, is behaving over time. And finally, the design decision was to try and make this uh, user metrics engine and API uh, as accessible as possible so that uh, if the community or researchers or uh, WMF staffers feel the need of uh, introducing new metrics or adding new parameters to these metrics, the, the tool is designed in such a way that we allow this accessibility. So this is a quick uh, overview of the, of the output um, of uh, what we call like a, a raw request. So um, what you see here is basically a cord. There is a, uh, yeah, it's a cord of three users. Uh, so three users are listed uh, below to the user entities as defined in a specific project. And this specific uh, metric uh, determines what we call the, the threshold metric. And the threshold metric determines whether each of these users uh, hit a specific number of edits uh, within a given amount of time since registration. 
Now, this is a metric that we use extensively in the context of regular engagement because we focus mostly on the idea of, uh, well, checking whether we could uh, take uh, uh, new new users just registered uh, on, uh, on, say, the English Wikipedia and turn them into editors. So, we just remain silent but start contributing to the project. And so, basically, what this metric does is that uh, it selects a score of three users. It specifies some parameters. So, for example, we can specify which project uh, these users are uh, defined in. Uh, what namespaces we're looking at, how much time we're looking at since the registration of these, uh, these new users, and uh, uh, what is the number of edits that we want to consider as a threshold for activity. And what the, the API returns is basically um, an easy, high-level um, representation of these users with respect to the, uh, the threshold metric. So you'll see we have zeros of one as a function of whether these users have hit or not the uh, um, the threshold, so the one threshold within 24 hours since registration in the main instance. So this is a raw response, um, meaning that we have a one, one result or a vector of result for each individual user, but we can also use the API to retrieve uh, an aggregate result. So again, take the entire court, take the digital responses for all of these users, and return a single statistic that uh, is meaningful to consider. So in this case, given the fact that uh, individual responses are booleans, so true or false, return a proportion. So how many users in the court uh, are white? And finally, there's a third type of response, which is what we call time series, um, uh, time series segregation. And basically what this does is that it allows you to break down a court uh, either by date of, or time of registration or by date or time of activity. So imagine again, you're not returning like a single value, a single statistic for the entire court, but in proportion where you break this down by the date uh, in which this user is registered, or by the date in which these users were active. And you can have total flexibility on the, on the range to which you apply this uh, uh, segregation or the slices. So you can be looking at uh, daily, weekly, monthly aggregates, et cetera. So this is where we are. Uh, in terms of uh, internal development. And at some point, uh, uh, this tool uh, caught the attention of uh, program evaluation. And uh, uh, there was a decision to try and see whether we could uh, uh, redesign a tool to make it actually more accessible, more usable to uh, external parties. And we started uh, um, to work on a new version of the tool um, called Wikimetrics uh, for a variety of reasons. The main reason is that uh, uh, this, in principle, could be applied to other sets of metrics, so not just user-level metrics, but also article-level metrics or project-level metrics. Um, and there's been a, uh, a lot of work uh, that went into the, uh, the design of this new version. In terms of uh, functionality, uh, the, the new version uh, is still very preliminary, so it doesn't provide yet the, uh, the extensive functionality of version one to so user metrics. But it's mostly focusing on a uh, improving the usability, so uh, as uh, Diana would be able to witness, uh, the first uh, version was mostly focused on providing you with the data, not necessarily making it easy for you to uh, construct these uh, complex reports or manipulate the parameters. Um, we redesigned the backend to make it uh, uh, more scalable so that more users concurrently uh, could access uh, um, this tool and, uh, uh, and also um, redesign the, the, the management uh, tool for um, uh, handling different queues and different requests. Introducing access control and user authentication so that uh, we can uh, allow for private data, um, like for example, defining groups of users that uh, uh, you may not want to disclose publicly. So for example, members, uh, uh, participants in a, in a, in a or participants in a given outreach event the, the idea that you might be disclosing the fact that the users uh, or uh, these editors were attending a specific event uh, is something that also is very specific. So we're building access control and uh, uh, user authentication precisely to uh, take care of these uh, delicate issues of uh, um, privacy uh, related to affiliation. And finally, we're building a layer of abstraction, meaning that uh, this data is currently um, obtained from uh, uh, slaves of our uh, production databases, but in principle, the same data can be obtained uh, from other sources. So I wanted to uh, ask Diana to give you uh, a quick demo of uh, uh, how Wikimetrics looks like and uh, how it works, and I'll uh, let her play with it. So uh, while well, well, Dario is bringing that up, for those of you who don't 
don't know me, I'm Leanna Davis. I'm the Wikipedia Education Program Communications Manager. And I've been using this tool for, well, I used the, the User Metrics API original version and now this Wikimetrics version. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Wikipedia Education Program, the essential way it works is that we work with university faculty and classrooms to have them assign their students to contribute content to Wikipedia as part of the course assignments. And so in the process of doing that, the students have listed their usernames on what's called a course page on any language Wikipedia they're working on. And so we have a predefined cohort um, because we have then each course has a list of users involved in it. Um, and so I'll just show you uh, what I have here. So, so these are the cohorts that I have uploaded. You can see we work mostly in uh, US and Canada, Egypt, Jordan, and, um, Algeria. <coughs> in the last couple of months here. So these are the cohorts that I've created. I will not demo uploading a cohort because it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, but let me go into creating a new report here. And you can just ignore all of these reports I've already created. What we care most about is the amount of bytes added. So we're looking specifically for how much content these students have added to the article namespace. Um, and so I will get a cohort here. Let's pick our Algeria one. Um, so this was the students in our program in Algeria from last term. And so I can go into the bytes added with this, and I can choose a time frame from the drop down here. So the term started in Algeria in March 1st of this year. And, and so then you can choose the namespaces. In this case, the article namespace is namespace zero. That's the only one we care about. We're not tracking what our students are doing on talk pages or on their user pages, any work that goes done in sandboxes, because that doesn't have an actual impact on Wikipedia. So we just are looking at what they're actually doing to the content of Wikipedia. So we only care about article name space zero in this case. Um, and I'm going to uncheck these boxes. <coughs> this is whether they regarded yeah. content or not. Could you look at the top page name space if you wanted to? Yes, yes. I assume so. Anyway. I've never, I've never looked, but I assume you could. Um, What's the so, question? Sorry. What? Could you repeat the question that was asked? Could you look at the top page, top <coughs> names if you want to? Yeah. And so then I'm just going to run this report. And it is pending here. So it will refresh. There it goes. OK, so I can get the data. And then I can select in this one to either get it as a JSON format or a CSV. Um, I will create it as a CSV here, so you can see, although now it's kind of Said, uh, uh, we're working on porting all the existing functionality from version one, like uh, user metrics, to the new version, uh, and we'd like to get involved. So, uh, if you're interested in uh, building new metrics, you're interested in uh, uh, well, familiarizing yourself with the code data, uh, if you're interested in why we're doing this, if you have concerns about uh, privacy, about the status of this data, please come and talk to us. The, um, the end user documentation for version one is available on uh, a board. So, if you look up a uh, um, this URL, you'll be able to, uh, to find it. And that covers like a pretty extensive description of the functionality of version one. And the code base uh, is available in our uh, Git repositories on Git, on Garrett, and uh, in Garrett, and synced on GitHub. So you can check out the code uh, and let us know if you'd like to participate. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Let's, let's talk about 
about Gwen after that. Sorry? Let's, let's talk about that after, because I want to focus questions on the tools well, so around, certainly something on the program. Going on the record. Um, also, the previous speaker for, for you <coughs> pointed out the, the fairly hostile frontier that the newcomers have to cross to get to become it.
a nasty environment that sometimes exists on Wikipedia. But you know, we can't say that's the entire blame for why Wikipedia and our editor number does peak. It's a global internet issue. There's just less people going around. Absolutely. And unfortunately, I think that we cannot uh, uh, try and see what we can uh, talk to Facebook and uh, decide whether they, they should stop doing what they're doing. So, but, yeah. so but, 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 okay, going back, going back to actionable changes, uh, these are really true. So we know that uh, these happen like at uh, a very specific point in time. You apply projects of different sizes and a different level of maturity. At the same time, we know today, I mean, evidence of, uh, of on the retention of new contributors. I mean, there's, there's a very solid evidence of what's happening today when you join Wikipedia, regardless of what's happening outside. So I think this is a problem we can tackle, that we need to tackle. And another example is, uh, uh, if you look at the uh, beta spaces, so those spaces on which what is discussion and meta level uh, conversation happens, we know, because again, there's evidence, there's evidence that uh, these spaces are completely saturated by the old guard uh, of existing uh, editors who've been around since 2006. So these are the issues. I mean, if you don't create spaces for new contributors uh, to be involved in discussions, in policy making, in policy unmaking, uh, uh, we're not gonna be able to uh, tackle the specific part of the project we can act on. Uh, I'm not going to say this is going to be able to uh, reverse the general trends of the web, but uh, this is something we can uh, really try to study. There are a number of the systemics of uh, your data, giving the more information about the quality of subject and uh, program in Brazil in Canada. Yeah, so two things. Currently, we don't have a, a, any output level metrics implemented. The focus of this was really on the user metrics. Uh, and there's a consensus literature about uh, uh, quality, many ways of measuring the quality of the quality of the or the quality of the um, We do think, in fact, that uh, we can use a uh, uh, paper trace or block trace to also get the uh, quality of the 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 that's correct, yeah. So this is purely based on a uh, quality uh, indicators of quality. Uh, so this, those proxies of quality we can extract from a quality indicator. But it's not much more than that. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
the time is up, but it's, it's up to the individual to say this.